Okay, so the first thing that um, patients need to think about is what treatment um, are they best suited for and, and how will that treatment affect them? Uh, men that are diagnosed with prostate cancer, they often face lots of different options. And because they're not experts themselves, it can be quite stressful to try and work through this. Um, as a specialist that deals with men with prostate cancer, um, I like to know and understand what type of prostate cancer they have, the stage and the grade. And there'll be some types of cancer that lend themselves to surgical removal, which is what a robot prostatectomy involves. Um, just because you have the right cancer to be treated surgically, you also have to have the right uh, patient factors. Um, even with the most sophisticated um, robotic technique, you still have to have a patient that's fit enough for pelvic surgery. Some patient factors uh, that can make this operation challenging can be if people have um, a high body mass index, essentially uh, obese, that can be a factor for the positioning and our ability to, to ventilate them during that procedure. Um, if people have serious heart and lung problems or blood clotting disorders, we may look to see if there are other options available to them. And sometimes if people have had extensive um, prior abdominal surgery, that can be an issue. Um, and that's something that might make us look at other options. But again, you know, a specialist surgeon can assess and advise on that. I think the most important thing for patients is really imagining what life's going to be like after their treatment. Uh, often in the panic to, to deal with this cancer problem, you can look to, to undergo treatments and perhaps not focus on what life's like afterwards. Um, robotic prostatectomy affects patients in a number of specific ways. Um, it can affect um, your, your waterworks, your continence, and it can affect your erectile function. So these are important things for patients to understand. Thankfully, with a modern technique, and because we can anticipate these problems, there's lots of help available to help patients through them. But some people will have certain um, life situations or, or work pressures that might mean that they need to you know, properly understand the side effect profile of their treatments. One of the most attractive things about a robot prostatectomy can be that your treatment can be carried out as a day case if you're suitable, your operation goes well. For some patients, that's very attractive to be out of hospital as soon as possible. And because it's minimally invasive, it does allow you to get back to work um, fairly quickly, which is important for younger uh, for younger patients or people that, that, that have you know, uh, work pressures. Um, and then I think finally, when you're thinking about a surgeon, uh, the surgery treatment, you, you need to make sure that you've got a surgeon that's experienced and a good surgical team. Um, you want to make sure that it's a high volume center um, and obviously someone that's experienced, not just in the surgery, but also in the aftercare as well. So the first thing that we try to do um, is make sure that we can get safe entry into the abdomen. Uh, normally make an incision just above uh, the umbilicus, that's the, that's the belly button. And we have a, uh, a safe technique that enables us to get in and have a look round and make sure that our, our robotic instruments are sighted um, appropriately and safely. Very occasionally if patients have had previous operations like hernias or appendicectomy, there might be some internal scarring that we need to, to deal with. Um, then next, we uh, look to mobilize um, the, the bladder um, and get to the prostate. Um, I do a, um, a posterior approach. So I, I like to dissect out the seminal vesicles and the vas and get underneath the prostate first. Um, and we know from the MRI scans prior to surgery uh, where the prostate cancer um, is located and we'll normally take steps to be very careful 
um, and dissect around the, the affected area. Uh, the, the two most important parts of the operation are uh, related to the reconstruction. So that's making sure that the bladder um, is joined securely to the urethra, which is the water pipe. Um, that's an important step. And part of the, uh, the skill with this operation is making sure you have sufficient urethral length and a good watertight anastomosis. Anastomosis is the, the term for the join. Um, on dissecting out the prostate, we also want to employ, when possible, uh, a nerve sparing approach. Um, we know where the nerves run that can help with the erectile function. In some patients, um, we're able to try and spare um, this structure. Um, it's not always possible, particularly if people have got more advanced cancer on that side. If you try and spare tissue, you can leave cancer behind. Um, sometimes patients have prostates that are quite inflamed um, and the focus then is obviously getting patients cancer free but generally speaking there is always some steps you can make to try and preserve some of those uh, nerve fibers and then after the prostate gland has been removed and the reconstruction has been completed um, we want to try and uh, so we, we then make sure that the abdominal wall defects are closed uh, with sutures that are designed to dissolve over time <clears throat> 